Okay, so it seems I made a bit of an oopsie with my pronunciation. The Hrotishwarsu, Hrotishwar estate, Hrotishwar, 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 Hrotishwar. Yeah, so one of the estates and the zoo on it I've been using for reference. I've been calling the Hrotishwar Zoo, which is just wrong. Apparently, it's pronounced Hrotishkir Zoo. You think after doing a decade of Afrikaans in school, you would have learned a few things, but no. Yeah, the, it's just the two U's next to each other got me. Otherwise, I think my pronunciations are pretty good. But anyway, let's carry on with the show. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Claintain Zoo, and all the historic South African zoo I'm building, starting from the early... Eight, no, late 1800s, early 1900s, and as the years go along. I will add buildings to the zoo and exhibits and that. So the zoo will have a proper timeline and a story to go along with it. So currently we're in the pre-zoo era, the private collection era, where it's not actually a zoo yet, just there's an estate and they have a private collection of, uh, of animals. And all the other buildings I'm putting on the estate will be in these wave of episodes. And eventually we'll get to the zoo, but for now, yeah, it's the uh, pre-zoo era, as I'll call it. So yeah, now to this episode, I am building some cattle pens and some horse stables. So, as you can see right here in the back, I'm building the horse stable. Going with that Cape Dutch style, I've been building with all the other structures on the estate, or most of the other structures. And I'm building it in the zebra pen for now, because I'm using the zebra as a scale. Just to see how big I should build it, because that's the closest thing we have to a horse in the game. Like, I know we don't have any actual cattle or, or horses in the game. The closest thing we have to a horse is, like I said, the zebra. And the closest thing to cattle is either the bison or the cape buffalo. So, yeah, even though there aren't any actual uh, cows or horses in the game, I decided I'm going to build this build stables anyway, because realistically it's what this estate would have had. And like I said last episode, this would have been built before the I built the uh, the the what what do I call that the pens for herbivores with the zebra and the sable because well essentially cows and horses would have been the main form of transport technically the only form of transport for this fa for the state at the time so it's been very important for them to have you know uh, horses and cows to pull their wagons and whatnot before they had their own animal collection since they needed them to get around places but like I said last episode I only thought of the actual building horses or stables and cow pens after or in the middle of building the herbivore pen so that's why the year I gave at the beginning of this is the same year as the last episode what's it 1898 I believe yeah, this would have been built beforehand, but I only thought of it afterwards. So as you can see, I'm doing the gables, the main feature on the structure of this stable or in the Cape Dutch architecture. And but I do redo a lot of this stuff here, the the gables on the the what's it, the stable, as well as the the roofs. I changed a little bit later on, which I'll talk about then. So. Just a bit of context in terms of how transport worked in South Africa and probably the rest of the world at the time of the late 1800s and actually before the late 1800s that the only transport available really was either by oxen wagon or by uh, I think what's it called station uh, station coach is that the one where the horses pull it it's a stagecoach yes stagecoach or just general horseback riding. Well, you could just walk, but to go very far distances, you wouldn't want to do that. Uh, especially on the rugged terrain. But anyway, the, that was the only transport method. Mainly oxen wagon was used. Because oxen um, were able to pull your carts very, like, very far. They were strong, they could carry cargo. And just, just in case you didn't know, an oxen are just cows. They are usually castrated male cows since male cows are stronger than well other cows and castration makes them easier to control you don't have any hormones raging around but i have seen it is possible that uh female cows and uncastrated male cows can be used as oxen but 
it's mostly the male cows that are used to pull carts. So yeah, in case you didn't know what an oxen was, because I thought it was pretty obvious, but I spoke to someone a bit earlier and they said they didn't know what that oxen were actually just cows, usually castrated males. So yeah, that was the main form of transport, and without oxen wagon, then uh, this, a few cities in South Africa wouldn't have been built. So Johannesburg and I think, yeah, Kimberley, they wouldn't have been built, because Kimberley is a city built on diamond mining, while Johannesburg is a city built on, is it gold? Uh, yeah, I think it's gold. And without, without oxen wagon to transport stuff in and out of those areas, those cities would not have been built. So, uh, well, at least it would have had to wait until railroads came around, which they eventually did, but with oxen wagon and as well as stagecoach, people were able to move there a lot faster. So yeah, the stagecoach is a horse-drawn carriage. You often see them in the, the Western movies, you know, have the people, I don't know, when, they, when they're just riding to an area near the stagecoach, which does seem very nice and stable in those movies but if you think about it realistically I do not think that would be quite fun because if you can imagine going off-road now if like in a car going on a dirt road very bumpy and not, not quite the most comfortable journey yeah I can imagine if you're going in horse wagon it would not be it would be even worse a little wooden cart pulled by horses and especially where the roads are a lot more rugged you would also have these mountain passes you have to go through and just probably would not be a fun time. Uh, I guess it beats walking or going in an open, uh, what's it, oxen cart. Maybe, I don't know, I've never ridden in either of those things. But yeah, so you can see in the stables in the background, I do have those little doors that you usually find in stables with a where you can look into the actual room of the horse and they have those little bars and then that thing is you can open it I guess so the horse can stick its head out I'm not too sure why they do that but that's the thing you see and also have two back rooms in the back with just general items that people would use so you have a step ladder some wheelbarrow a couple vases I'm not sure why some sacks yeah, so the design of the stable I went for was a open design, a bit of a, it's not a completely closed stable design. So the front gables, I'll show you a picture later on. I did uh, use a Cape Dutch style stable I found a picture of on Google, but the that stable is fully enclosed. So the middle bit would have been completely sheltered by roof, whereas this stable the area where the horses and maybe even mules because mules and donkeys could have been used to pull stagecoaches that area those areas are completely closed by roof but the middle area is open so the initial thing i was thinking about where i saw that was monte casino uh, not, no not monte a uh, gold reef city which is a which is a theme park yeah a theme park slash casino in johannesburg south africa and they have a farmyard and the, their horse stables are done quite like that an open area where the horses are on the side so the horses are completely sheltered while the middle bit where people walk through is open Pretoria Zoo also has a similar stable to that so took inspiration from both of those places to try and get this cool stable design so I did have a there was a bit of a cut there and you can see I did I'm changing out the roof here so instead of using the on-grid tiled roof pieces, I do decide to use the corrugated metal pieces. And these are the off-grid ones, because there are two, there's like a proper roof set of corrugated metal pieces that are on the grid. And then there are these ones, the off-grid flexi-color ones, which I use because, well, they're off-grid and they're flexi-color. The on-grid ones are just, uh, they, the fact that it's on the grid really not, not on the grid, the, that they're not flexi color annoys me, they just have this grey and I want that blue color and also, well the on the grid is also a problem because I can't have them at night like a smaller angle than the 1 meter, 2 meter, 4 meter thing whereas with this the 
corrugated uh, metal sheets I can do that and also the corrugated metal sheets are a bit smaller so I can have my roof a bit more personalized as to how I want it I don't have to have it I, I, I'm trying I don't know how to explain this but I can have it a uh, bit more cu customized as you can see whereas the on grid pieces will be they, they, they won't they won't really fit the actual roof style I'm doing here but the only problem with the the corrugated iron is that if you go really far away in the sky each of the sheets look very uh they look like solar panels I'll, sh I'll show you that later but anyway as you can see now i am completely taking out those gables i'm gonna redo them there's a few pieces i found in the classic set that also have that limestone kind of background they aren't the windows because before i would use windows to create the gables now i use these other kind of wall pieces i'm not sure what they all call they're kind of like wall trims and just those uh little cool detail pieces you'd use so yeah i use some of them to create the circle because initially on the gable i had the window and i just had a little black circle in there just to kind of show that there was a hole in the wall but realistically since this is all just an outdoor part of the exit the stable sorry there would be you would have light coming through it so i decided not i have to have an actual circle that the the the, the light will come through i can't just have a little black dot there that wouldn't make sense I've, I've put in the extra effort and so yeah we are working on the gable using those extra pieces i do have that that circle in the middle like i wanted it's not an exact circle because the pieces don't exactly allow for that most of these pieces are geometric so with these cape dutch uh, gables being a bit organic is a little hard to do but i think i came out quite nicely so i probably could have actually maybe even used these pieces for the estate house and the other cape dutch houses i built earlier in earlier episodes but maybe in the future if i do them again i would use these pieces because they're all off grid very nice and neat to use and there's a lot more pieces than just the windows the only problem is that these pieces, the color is slightly different to the lime walls. So when I did, I had to redo the front wall in those off-grid pieces just so they match up a little bit. You'll, you'll see what I mean when I go through the actual walkthrough bit. Oh yeah, so now I'm just doing the last bit of this speed build, which is the cattle pen. So I simply take the, the roofs from the stable just rip them and modify them a little bit just so they get a cool cattle shelter and cattle aren't aren't too special they don't get a proper indoor exhibit or indoor stable I should rather say they get this cool outdoor thing because most of the cattle pens I see in South Africa most modern cattle pens even they're all outdoors type places oh, and also have these custom wooden fences and I used the same gates I used last episode in the... What was, what was it? The... I'm trying to remember what did I build? Oh, herbivore pens. Every time I try and think what I did last episode, I can't remember what I built. It was herbivore pens. So yeah, I just use those gates. And the time lapse is coming to an end. So I'm going to catch you in the real time portion to show off what I built. Okay, welcome to the real time portion. Before we go and check out all the stables and that, I want to show you one of the carts I've been working on here. And this is kind of... I took reference from one of the uh, picture I saw of a bunch of carts in uh, Kimberley, one of the cities I mentioned earlier. An oxen pulled cart, so there's a whole bunch of sacks on there. So, in this cart I actually took the, the Planet Coaster cart, which is, you know... I think there's two carts. I think this is the East Asia one and then there's an Indian one. So I took two of them, put them together so we have the four wheels and put a whole bunch of sacks on them. So I have a few more in the back which I'll show off now now. Anyway, let's go and check out our stables. And you can see here we have our horse stables. No horses in them I'm afraid. I did try and put some zebras in there just to see if they could use it and this two meter wide door, yeah, the zebra couldn't fit in there. 
Thanks Frontier, giving such massive hitboxes to all the objects and animals. It's uh, it's really annoying that you can't make proper doors that the animals can actually fit through. But uh, as you can see with this table, I do have this cool Cape Dutch style. The doors and pretty much the shape of the stable is very much inspired from a actual stable I saw on Google. I'll probably put the image up now. But yeah, and I did add this cool little extra detail I saw in that actual that stable. Is that you have these little brick pieces poking through where it was probably too low to plaster through. So that's just a cool little extra detail I really like. As for the gables, let me show you what I did here. These are all the off-grid pieces. So this here is a what is it called? This mural piece, I think it's called, or a relief piece. So use those, and they work quite well as walls. So only for this front bit, and it's just because this limestone, this lime wall, has a different color to the to what these classic pieces. So let me change the time of day. So maybe you can see it a bit better. Yeah, there would just be this line here, which really annoys me. So I decided to make all of them of, of those off-grid pieces, which yeah, you can see a little sample. These are some of the pieces I used, and this is the circle piece I used for the middle here. So you have a proper circle that we can fly through, and the light comes through. Not just a black hole, kind of like what I did on the estate house over there, which I'm fine with because that's all indoors, but... This is outdoors, so it makes sense you'd be able to see through it. Let's ch change the light back. Yeah, these outdoor areas, these wouldn't be the major areas where the horses would stay. I mean, well, they would sleep in here, and then I suppose if you want to saddle them or attach a car to them, want to work on them, they would be in here. For the most part, I imagine they would be out somewhere in the state grazing. Same thing with the cattle, like these are small cattle pens and while the cattle will sleep there and if the people want to tend to them they can, but otherwise for the most part they would be out in these fields from the estate grazing. The estate does have a pen so they shouldn't escape. And that's what people actually do nowadays even on those big properties and farms. So I did put some food troughs, we have these cool little wooden troughs here. And I did put a actual food dish in here. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, this water trough. I'm not sure if it works, if the zookeepers will come and fill that up or if the animals can access that. Uh, you're gonna have to try that out, but I'll try it out later. Yeah, just thought I'd put that in and I put some food troughs attached to the... Oh, technically these are water troughs. The food troughs are way too big to try and squeeze in the in like a little rectangular basin like that. Same thing on this side. So yeah, let's actually go inside the stable. You can see here I did put some gutters in, which I think is a cool detail because it will get wet in here. Well, rain would come through or if you want to wash the horses or not, okay, not the horses, I meant the I don't know if you wash horses. Do you wash horses? One of you. If you're a horse person, you're gonna have to tell me. But uh, if you want to wash these, what's it? The rooms for the horses, because I imagine they'll get dirty, and eventually you're gonna wanna take a bucket of water and scrub it down. In which case, there's water in here. You can just the water will just flow through these drain pipes. And because they're drain pipes here, I decided to put some planks of wood. They're probably leftovers from construction of these doors. And you would get your wheelbarrow over there, or maybe even the horses could climb over the wood. It's a small gap, so I imagine the horse could walk over it, but maybe you have a dainty horse and it needs some wood planks to come across these small gutters. So I do have this cool little room here, you did see in the time lapse. Shelves in the background, wheelbarrows, just a bunch of planks. And there is this empty room. Yeah, nothing in there. That's maybe extra storage, whatever, whatever you want. 
Oh no, the terrain's all messed up here. That's my bad. Yeah. Okay. Yep, all better. Yeah, we have in each of these rooms we have a concrete floor with some hay bedding on them for the horses. You can see these gates are openable, or you can close them, or you can fully open the door if you want to get in there. Similar thing on the back here. Top is openable, fully openable, or fully closable. So yeah, those are the horse stables. And over here I do have a nice little circular pen. I suppose also if you want to do some work with the horses, if you want to train them, maybe. I'm not quite sh I don't know, I've seen one of these circular pens before. Again, I, I don't know how horses work, I'm not a horse person. Let's just make it a bit bright in the day. So yeah, I'm not too sure on this big oak in the middle of this pen. Don't know if I should keep it or not. But, I guess it gives cool shade to this place. Next episode, I'm probably going to do a whole bunch of foliage, so redo some of the trees and that, yeah. And as for the cattle pens, here we have a few uh, cow pens. We have two separate ones in case you want to separate your cows. But if you want to keep them together, you can open this gate to let them out. <coughs> and here we have a bigger kind of pen if you want to keep them in. But like I said, for the most part, they should actually be able to go on the property and graze. Random wheelbarrow, just for some extra detail. And some more food troughs. These wooden food troughs that the cows would come and eat. And then we also have the plaster ones, the concrete ones back here. So, last thing I think I want to show you is these, this little storage shed here. This hay bale is taken from Ruble Trillions. He's working on a... I think a recreation of the Denver Zoo, and in there he did some backstage thing, and he used these these uh, hay pieces, these uh, fat roof pieces, to create these cool hay piles, so I stole that from him. Not my idea, it's his idea, you should check out that zoo. And over here we have a few more carts, so these empty carts, and yeah, I made a stage wagon. A stage? Stage wagon, yeah, I think that's the name, I keep on forgetting it. If you have the driver's seat up here, the little thing at the back where you put your bags and you also put your bags up there and you would tie rope across this metal. And here's the guest part, so you have seats there and there. It's not realistically sized. I'll... Anyways, yeah, if I use this archer here. This is an archer made by Mr. Domez. Just uh, used for scale because in Planet Coaster people used to use the archer for scale. So you use it for scale now. As you can see, it is a bit on the small side for an actual person. Stage wagons would realistically be a bit more bigger, and these carts as well would be a bit more wider. But I think it's cool as long as we don't keep anything next to those carts, if we keep it in the background. The scale, you don't really see the scale, so yeah, keep it like that. But anyway, I think that's all for the show for today. Next episode, like I said, we will work on some foliage and maybe afterwards I'll actually get some more animals into this place. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!